Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this part, we will be talking about phylum Arthropoda. So this is our next phylum. And here also we will discuss the general uh, characteristics, a brief classification and then we will start taking various examples. Arthropoda is the largest phylum. That means it has maximum number of species. And the name Arthropoda is given because they have jointed appendages. <clears throat> appendages are the structures which arise from the main body. Now they may be for walking or for swimming. So there are appendages which have pieces joined and that is why we call them jointed appendages. If we talk about the general characteristics, they have exoskeleton and this exoskeleton is made up of chitin. Chitin is a homo polysaccharide and it is made up of N acetyl glucose amine. Pure chitin is soft and leathery, but in case of the exoskeleton of arthropods, it gets deposited with calcium salts and that is why it becomes very hard. And this chitin is present in pieces. Each piece is known as sclerite and these are again on the dorsal side one piece, on the ventral side and on the lateral sides also. So if we talk about the dorsal piece, there is one ventral piece and there are two lateral pieces. The dorsal one is known as tergum, the ventral is known as sternum and the lateral these two they are called the pleura and these pieces are joined, they are connected. So here there is a connection and this connection is of arthropodial membrane. So this membrane which connects these pieces is known as arthropodial membrane. So this is about the exoskeleton. Now as we said exoskeleton is of chitin, chitin is a dead material, it is not going to grow. The animal which is inside grows in size but the exoskeleton does not grow. So they shed the exoskeletal pieces and regrow new pieces which are slightly bigger and this shedding is known as molting. So they show molting which is also known as ecdiasis. This is nothing but shedding of the old skeleton or rather exoskeleton which is not going to grow according to the growing body of that arthropod. So this is exoskeleton. Now the arthropods are the first animals like when we start animal kingdom we started with porifera. So they are the first ones to have voluntary muscles. Up till now there were some animals who had muscles, the longitudinal, the circular and these were involuntary muscles. These are voluntary muscles for the first. So arthropoda is the first phylum to have these muscles. The digestive system is very well developed and we are not talking about all those basic characters which we will just write down the words. Digestive system is well developed but they show different types of mouth parts, different types of mouth parts. So if we talk about the mouth parts, the mouth parts can be chewing type like in case of cockroaches, they can be piercing and sucking type as in case of mosquitoes or they could be sponging type 
that means they have the capacity to suck the digested or the food which is in liquid form. So depending upon what type of food habits they have, they would have different types of mouth parts. Cockroaches or cockroach type and insects would have chewing type, mosquitoes would have these, house flies would have sponging type of mouth parts. So it is variable depending upon the food habit. The next is excretory system. They can be a monotelic or uricotelic depending upon where they live. If they are aquatic, they can excrete ammonia and if they are terrestrial like cockroaches or insects, they are uricotelic. Then respiration, for respiration also there are various structures. There can be tracheary system, tracheary system is made up of tubes. The opening is known as spiracle, then there are many tubes and it reaches up to each and every part. Then apart from this, there can be gills, like in case of prawns, there can be book gills and there can be book lungs. Like book lungs are found in scorpions and book gills are found in king crabs. So these are the respiratory structures. Main is tracheary system. So excretion is done, respiratory system we have talked of. Now let us come to circulatory system. They have open circulatory system. Open circulatory system means the fluid which is flowing through the blood vessels is going to come out in the open spaces and those spaces are known as sinuses. So here they have a tubular heart and the fluid which flows is known as hemolymph. Hemolymph is without any respiratory pigment that means there is no hemoglobin kind of pigment here and then there is circulation through the heart and few blood vessels very few and then it comes into sinus. The sinuses are the spaces in which the organs are dipped and the exchange of respiratory gases or substances would take place from that liquid and the organ which is present in that liquid. Nervous system is also developed. They have a rudimentary brain. Then there is CNS which includes the brain and the cord. Then PNS that is peripheral nervous system which is made up of the various kinds of nerves. So basically all the systems are pretty well developed. The general things that they are triploblastic, they are coelomates, but when we talk of coelomates, we always write that they are hemocoelomates because this cavity is filled with hemocele. Then they are bilaterally symmetrical. And organ system is very well developed as we have seen here. The last system that we need to talk of is reproductive system. In case of arthropods, the sexes are separate. Sexes are separate. That means there would be a male arthropod and a female arthropod. Fertilization may be internal or external. Fertilization, external as well as internal. And the development can also be direct or indirect. Direct development means what comes out of the egg is a tiny organism fully formed like what happens in case of cockroaches. 
they lay eggs and what comes out of the egg is called nymph. That nymph resembles the adult cockroach except for few things. Internally they do not have the sex organs developed and they do not have wings also. And indirect means there are larval stages like in case of mosquitoes, house flies, butterflies there are larval stages. So from egg there is larva which comes out. From the larva we get the pupal stage and then from the pupa comes the adult. So various systems, all these systems are very well developed. For excretion the structures are Malpighian tubules. This is the main uh, excretory structure. They also show storage excretion with the help of some special cells called urate cells. What urate cells do? They keep collecting that uric acid or the nitrogenous waste and once they are fully loaded with that waste, they would come and attach on the inner side of this exoskeletal piece. As we said that they show molting, that means once this exoskeleton is becoming tight, new one will be secreted and this old one will be discarded. So when this is discarded along with that urate cell which is full of nitrogenous waste will also get lost. So they work by storage excretion. In case of prawn, there is one more structure which helps in excretion and they are called the green glands or sometimes they are also called the antenary glands because their openings are just beneath the antennae. So this is the general uh, feature or general features of arthropoda. Now in arthropoda we also need to understand the classification. Arthropoda is classified into seven classes and the criteria for this classification is the number of appendages, then the mode of excretion that is whether they are excreting with the help of malpighian tubule which is that nitrogenous waste which is, which is getting excreted and all examples in this particular or in all these seven classes are very important. So we will just write down the names of these seven classes here and in the next part we will take up every class and one at least one example of every class. So first is called Ornicophora, then Arachnida, third is Crustacea, fourth Insecta, then Chilopoda, sixth is Diplopoda and the seventh one is Miro stomata. Now the classification is on many criteria but the most important is the appendages and the excretion. Now which all are the important examples of this? In Onychophora we would include peripatus which is called the walking worm. In Arachnida we include the spiders. In Crustacea we have prawns. Insecta are the most common insects like cockroaches and houseflies and all. Chilopoda, there are centipedes. Diplopoda includes millipedes. And this class includes the king crab or Limulus. So we will talk about at least one example of each class and the special features. That we will start from the next video.